Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial series for Aborion. I'm Icon and in this series I'm going to explore this game for you. I'm going to explain pretty much everything that you can do in this game and you're going to find the instructions and explanations necessary to do so in the episodes of this series. I'm trying to be as thorough as possible, so this is going to be explanations with keystrokes and whatnot, so if you're looking for something to guide you through this detailed, you're at the right spot. So this first video will cover fundamentals. We're going to go over the controls, we're going to go over the mining of ore, which we need to build ships, and we're going to build a very, very basic ship. If you're looking for one of these topics in particular, just check out the timestamps in the description box so you won't need to watch anything you already know. So let's get started. We're going to start a single player galaxy, create a new one, and scenario wise, I'm going to play the normal scenario. This is going to be the normal progression curve where you have to unlock stuff and all these things because I personally think this is the way the game was the most fun for me to play as a newcomer here. So we're going to go into that and difficulty wise I'm going to stick to the veteran difficulty so we'll have to put in some effort. Feel free to pick any difficulty you want. You can change all these difficulties at any point of the game, only hardcore and insane are behaving a little bit diff differently, but since this is a beginner series, let's not talk about it. Hardcore and insane difficulties here. So, here we go. We're going to rename this into YouTube Tutorial Galaxy. And if you want to play along, this is the seed that you would need for it this one and we're going to play with collision damage you can of course decide for yourself if you want to have collision damage or not I personally like it because it, it it's just making me put in more effort so we're now putting up a, a single player so that this game always works like that your your galaxy will be processed as a uh, secondary application that's basically hosting the server, but that's no internet connection per involved. So we're now waiting for the universe to be created. This game is full procedural content, so that means there are a couple of baseline quests. There's a basic storyline that you can play through, but the galaxy, the, the, the enemies, the factions, their placement, the environment, it'll all change with every galaxy that you create. So we got this and here we are. We are now this little thingy here. I'm moving the mouse just uh, to look around. It's just uh, just me moving the mouse casually. You, you notice these little blue blobs there. These are your uh, your turrets. These, uh, it's the, the aim where, where they're headed to. They're always aiming towards that cross in the center. Fundamental basics, pretty easy. W for acceleration forward, S for, well, driving backwards, also deceleration, but more about that later. D and A for strafing, strafing uh, sideways, Q for diving downwards, E for rising upwards, Y and X for, for this little tumble roll here. That's the really, really fundamental basics. Holding down the shift key frees up the cursor for all manner of different things. You have here a couple of different menus. We're going to explore them whenever we need them. Down here we have the battery. That's the juice you need for moving your ship mostly. And that's your hull. Goes down to zero, ship goes boom. Not good. So the next thing we're needing now is a little bit of resource to get our first ship because without resources, there's no ship. If you put up your player menu here with a shortcut of P, you can see how much stuff you earn, uh, own here. There's your credits, 10,000 we own, and iron, titanium, neonite, and so on and so forth. These materials are the stuff you're building your ship out of. The player menu also features a ton of other things, but more about that later. So we're going to try and find some ore now. So we're going to go here and soar, soar for, uh, forward towards this little asteroid. When you hold down the space key, you uh, boost your ship and you see up there the, the speed, the meters per second shift. 
and here 75 meters per second is my standard speed of the drone and if I press spacebar it's going more and if I want to go uh, slow if I want to really break down effectively it's way more effective to just uh, turn around with the mouse and propulse yourself into the opposite direction you can of course slow down by just pressing S but that's sometimes not enough if you really want to go slower real fast you just have to turn around the opposite direction and uh, put propulsion in because we're in space you know but these things well don't take them too seriously if they are confusing you at first it'll all come in in time don't you worry so the first things we want to do now are gathering some metal and we're slowly leaving the fundamental control section here only a couple of extra things here so when i'm putting my cursor above that asteroid you see it's showing up in that lower right corner if you press the middle mouse button you can fix that uh, or select that item under your cursor if you press it somewhere in blank space again you deselect it these asteroids here are really really the uh, most attractive things in the very very early game these are titanium asteroids that's an iron asteroid that's just the regular stone asteroid you can mine them but there's no use in that your starting ship here, that little drone, is what you always will have if you have no ship. This is basically your 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 basic thing to grind resources with and build a new ship if you get blown out your old ship. So that ends the fundamental controls. We're going to mine some now. So let's get over to that asteroid and select it with a middle mouse button and fly closer to it. Watch out these blue circles. Watch out until they turn green. So, here we go. Once they turn green, that means you're in range for your turrets to fire. Left mouse button is just firing up that good old laser. And as you see here, we're just, uh, we're just lasering away that asteroid. It's nothing special, but it's also a lot of fun. Every asteroid is composed out of lots and lots of segments and you see here I need to get closer to reach the rearmost segments of that asteroid and congratulations that how that's how you gather ore. I'm going to show you the difference on that titanium asteroid real quick and there we go also waiting until it's green and then just firing these uh, titanium asteroids, as you see, they, they look and behave differently. They are, though, the next tier of material after iron. Iron is the lowest tier of materials, and titanium is basically tier, tier 1. I'd call iron tier 0. So, your first job there is to gather a couple of thousand units of iron, and a couple of hundred units of titanium. You'll need the iron for the hull of a new ship and the titanium is important because you can't build any power generators out of iron. Power generators can only be built out of titanium therefore you need a couple of titanium units. I mean you could also not but more about that later. So you see we got new mail here mail is hotkey l and we got a little bit of a notification there because we gathered our first titanium and we also got a new uh, item building knowledge tier two well okay the game says it's tier two so i'll say so too so we'll take this and we're going to need that as soon as we build the spaceship so for starters you just have to fly around gather your gather your materials it's pretty simple, just fly close to those asteroids and you laser them away. So once you have something around 5,000 or so units of iron, maybe two or 3,000 would be also enough, depends on how impatient you are, you can just proceed and build your first ship. I personally will do that now off camera because you don't want to watch me until I've grinded up all that metal. And once that's done, we're going to build a first ship together. Okay, so I got myself 
some fresh iron here, 5,000 units, and 190 units of titanium. Don't worry about low numbers in that regard, they will be enough. The next thing we're looking for now is a resource depot. They look like this, you have this uh, little uh, stack of ingots there, but if you're incapable of finding what you're looking for, like let's pretend you're lost here, just hit the end button, you find that also here in the strategy mode thingy, and there you see a strategical overlay of the sector you're, you're traversing to. Holding down the right mouse button gives you the ability to paint that. Mouse wheel gives you the ability to zoom in and out. And most importantly, it gives you the ability to just select an, a station. In that regard, we're looking for the resource depot. And then you just press escape. And now we see that little blue arrow thingy here. Or... Uh, cyan I should rather say is pointing towards there so we're now flying to towards the resource depot the resource depot is the place where you can refine ores and sell them because building a ship does cost us some money I'm going to sell a portion of that iron we acquired so here the closer you fly when you have them selected you see those little docking nodes we're flying towards one of these and booster ring and here you see hold f tractor beam we're going to do that pulling it down tractor beam is reeling your ship in until you are docked so now you can safely interact with the station pressing f for interaction and now we're trading resources here you see we could also buy resources but there's only a huge stockpile of iron here but instead we're going to sell some of our iron here I'll say we're going to sell 2,000 units of iron. Boom. So we now got a little bit more money. Now, building a ship is something I love to do at a equipment dock. You can also go towards a shipyard, but that's not really necessary. So equipment uh, dock, and we see that's a 40 kilometer flight. That's a little bit annoying, but you know, we got to bite that bullet. Sometimes you just have to live with that later down the road we can traverse uh, such things with autopilot but that little drone doesn't have the features to automatically fly for you sadly so i'm going to fast forward this little travel here we skipped some time and here we are at the equipment dock you don't necessarily have to be next to an equipment dock to build a ship but i personally made that a habit because you can build equipment here if I missed something. So, to build a ship, the first thing you need to do is to sit inside a drone and hit the B button. Or you just go here into the building mode by doing this uh, directly, but the first time you need to hit the B button. So, we're going to enter a name of our ship for now. This is going to be our starter ship. I'm calling this starter ship right away because this is a ship that doesn't have any specific and particular purpose. We're going to use this ship to found the rest of our start. So that's why it's our starter ship. As you see here, there's a founding fee of 500 iron, and we also get a little bit of crew. Huzzah. Crew is also a good reason to hang around a equipment uh, dock for building ships. So, what has happened? We're now sitting inside that little cube here. This is, uh, this is our ship right now. Well, it's going to be our ship. It's not really a ship right now. It's really just a foundation block. If you hit hold down shift and you can here press this button or exit into drone, here you can see this is your ship, this is your drone. You can also just select it and press T to enter it again. So pressing B now again will bring us into the building mode. What a behemoth of a of a thing! So this is a this is one of the most massive and uh, brilliant tools of this game, but it's also really really overwhelming. So for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to build a very very simple and easy ship design here. Something I'm only going to use the parts to make this thing fly. Okay, okay. So. First things first, you can hold down your right mouse button to rotate that thing. You can use the arrow keys to rotate your uh, perspective onto the ship. There's one uh, caveat though. You can only strafe left and right, forward and backward. 
you can't go upward and downward directly. You have to uh, work a little bit around that, but you'll grow uh, used to that. So now we're going to check out that arrow. This is the direction where your ship is uh, aiming towards to. So that means this is where your ship is flying towards to. This is the direction where your engines will go. When you press onto this button here or press G, you expand the whole blocks menu. So this, this is all the stuff you can build out of iron. If you scroll down, this is all the stuff that you can build out, out of titanium. And you see, we can't build anything out of titanium right now, which is a tragedy because we want to change that. So let's go into our player menu and check out our inventory here. And you see, we found that building knowledge tier too. So now we just uh, double click that to activate it. So now we learned how to build titanium blocks. So you see, now we've unlocked that little roster here. But I guess you are already completely overwhelmed with all that if you're the, here the first time. So the game does want you to do a couple of things to make the ship fly. <clears throat> first off, you'll need engines. So let's start with that. Engine blocks are these. You see, you can just select them and then you have these blocks on your cursor. It's looking quite nice, isn't it? So we can just place down our engines on the rear side, but you know, we could now pre place down four different engines, but that would be rather boring. You can also hold down control while hovering over one of these plates and then it will adjust to the part you're hovering to, so you see. It's trying to adjust that a bit. You can also press Alt to transform this block into an engine block, but we don't want that. Or you can hold down Shift for a similar purpose here. But for now, we're just going to add in holding down Control and pressing, in it, pressing the left mouse button for once. So now we put an engine block right on top of that, but this will be really, really, really not enough. So now we're going to select some smart hull blocks. Don't go for blank hull blocks because they are mostly decorational things. Smart hull blocks are, oh, how to explain that? They they add in all the, all the juicy electronic parts your ship needs to grow stronger. When you're only adding blank hull, your your ship is only growing to go going to grow larger in proportions, but not stronger in, in in stats. Grossly oversimplified, but I think it does make sense for you. So you want those smart hull blocks. So if I press, if I now hold down uh, control once more, I get that adjusted block. But I don't want to adjust my blocks every time. So you can also configure the size of your blocks on your own. So there are three, there are four different tools to do so. So first off, if you hold the W button, you can scale the object by moving the mouse now, outside and inward, uh, or outward and inward. And you see here those numbers change, one on one on one, two on two on two. These are the dimensions of that. If you, while you're holding down W, you can change the object in all three dimensions at once. When you're holding down A, you change only one of those dimensions. And you see that red line? It's indicating what kind of dimension you will change. So while holding down A now, if I move the cursor into this direction, the block grows smaller. If I move it outwards, the block smalls grows into this direction. So let's put that back to this. Holding down S changes this axis. You see, it's the same mechanic and holding down D changes this axis. Pretty simple, isn't it? Once you have understood these, you can drag and drop and configure these blocks just as you want to. So I repeat, W for scaling the entire cube, and A, S, and D for just scaling the particular uh, axes. Uh, is that a word? <laughs> for scaling the particular axis. You can always Put, use that colored line as a reference to know what kind of uh, axis you are configuring right now. I It took me a while to not be confused anymore with how, what button I need 
to change it out. And I learned that following these, these, these colored lines until hitting the buttons randomly until I find the colored line that points into the direction that I need worked out brilliantly for me. But enough of that, let's put down a couple of uh, whole chunks here and let's get back to the engine blocks and put them here. So I don't want to have a larger engine block, but I could. We could look and make it look like that. Let's look, make it look like that, why not? So what you also should notice is that the stats on the right side change. So we gain hull HP, we gain acceleration, we gain max velocity, but we also gain required energy and a lot of other things. So you see, there's always going to be a reflection of your, of your new ship part onto the stats of the ship. So I think we got enough engines, a max velocity of 236 meters per second is okay. So we're all engine, but no, but no other parts. So the next thing you'll need for your ship will be absolutely vital, and that's your crew quarters, because your ship does need a crew to be to be uh, functional. So we're selecting that crew quarters block now, and this this does work pretty similarly so i want to expand this now you see i'm going to check out this and now i'm going to put down the crew quarters block six on two on two and you see below those uh, measurements also the costs and credits and the costs costs and iron so we're going to place that down Boom. and now we have two of 16 crew slots okay so our ship does generate energy without adding any generator blocks. You will always have a, a baseline production of 500 megawatt. And you see our ship now does require 212 megawatt. The more different pieces you put in, the more energy requirement there is. So we're going to scroll down here and put up one, one titanium generator tile. But as you might already have noticed, this is growing a lot costier, and we don't have 1,200 units of titanium either. So we're going to shrink that tile, shrink it further, and you see that's still more than I can pay. So we're going to shrink it until it's one on one on one, let's say. Whoop. Here we go. Uh, well, we could basically afford a little bit more. So one and a half on one and a half on one and a half is what we can afford so you see this will bring our ship more power that's brilliant isn't it so let's do this so we're placing down the generator tile on top of this for now well i'm doing things that an experienced player won't be doing but this is all just for the sake of understanding how things work so now we have more energy. By the way, here is an undo button or short key control Z. If you're using more graphical uh, applications, you will find that quite useful. So control Z, we could also make that unhappen or redo control Y. So you get the idea. So we have a little bit more energy. Trust me when I say we're going to need that. But I don't want to have the generator block here. I want to have the generator block rather here, and I also want it to be the same height as the other parts, because you know, I don't want my ship to have irregularities in, in terms of height. So, costs too high. We're just going to shrink the part in this axis a bit, and voila, we have what we need. So, I'm just doing this to show you that you can do, and that you can, adjust your ship parts just as you need them and generator parts it's pretty simple don't put them anywhere onto the surface because if the enemy shoots them away they're gone and it's not good to have no generators okay so now our ship has engines it has crew quarters it has a generator but what doesn't what it doesn't have are thrusters so thrusters come into um flavors and they have a specific purpose Thrusters are what you need to slow down your ship or give it any directional steer. So the thruster is an omnidirectional part. I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to make that part now fit into this uh, little niche here. So here we go. So you see here they're not exactly fitting. 
together here so this part will stand out a bit but that's okay so i'll show you what this looks like so we're going to install two thrusters and you see these thrusters do cost us some acceleration but they yield more deceleration power that's the power of slowing us uh, ourselves down and also pitch roll and yaw um these well radii per second so you see these are measurements how how quickly you can turn per second these make sense the more you play this game so we're putting up two thrusters here the other possible element are directional thrusters directional thrusters are a little bit more complicated they will only put propulsion into the direction they point into. So you see here, uh, these uh, these little, uh, you see these bright green thingies. That's the direction where they will uh, put propulsion out. So if I put this down here, it's going to be only a singular directional propulsion part because it can only do its thing into one direction. And if I put it up here, it's uh, it's going to be better. And as you see here also, Check out the stats, how they change. The position of the directional thrusters is massively changing their impact onto the ship. A rule of thumb, if you're going for directional thrusters, the further outside of the ship they are, the better they can do their job. But since we're doing a newbie guide here, we're just going to use the simple directional thrusters here because uh, or no the, the simple omni uh, directional thrusters because they are just good enough for all your needs at the beginning you don't don't you worry so we're going to make a couple of extra thruster elements here and don't shy away from from using a lot of these because they are really well it's hard to have too many of them they cost you acceleration, yes, so you can have too many of them, but if you have the feeling you're speeding up too slow, you can just add in more engines. But we're going to leave it like that, because this will work for the time being. So using the arrow keys now to zoom in a little bit, zoom around. So we now have an engine, we have crew quarters, we have deceleration tools. What we don't have are spots where we're going to use our turrets at because we're going to need some spot to put our turrets on. So we're going to go back in here. And by the way, you can just drag and drop these parts into the hotbar here. So you can access them easier. There we go. So we're going to use the smart hull parts yet again. And we're going to put in a little bit of extra parts here. So there we go. These mainly will be working as a platform for my for my guns. And now we're going to put in a couple of extra thruster elements here. Just to make the thing a little bit more mobile. Here we go. Okay, so this is a very, very basic but working design. There are a lot of things lacking, but a couple of things were still needing here so we check out the other stats here now let's go down to this uh, particular section arbitrary turrets armed turrets unarmed turrets and so on and so forth and you can see there are in a total three different types of turrets armed turrets that's all that's uh, going to be controlled by you to shoot down enemies unarmed turrets that's mining and salvaging uh, lasers and defensive turrets, that's mostly automatic firing point defense cannons, for example, to, to shoot out torpedoes out of, uh, out of the sky before they can hit you. So, arbitrary uh, turrets are slots that can be used however you please. So, you see, we can now put in turrets. Turrets are here under this uh, little section here, or behind the uh, hotkey T. We're going to use mining lasers here for uh, for now, so you can also put them onto the hotbar if you really want to, but I'd highly not recommend you to. So, mining lasers. Now, we're going to see you can put them any way you want to, but not on top of the thrusters. That's one thing. You can really use pretty much every part, but the thrusters are a no-go. Well, I think it goes without saying. So we're going to install the two laser, two uh, mining drills we got here. And now you see 
we have unarmed slots two of two and that's that you can now go into the ship menu pressing i will do the trick or clicking that icon here so here you see the slots for turrets we still have one armed turret slot open so why not use that we're going in here we have a chain gun uh, turret here so let's use that there i'm going to put that onto the downside of that ship because why not here we go so what happened now is that we have a lot of uh, red uh, flashy marks here because we're lacking mechanics engineers and so on and so forth but fundamentally this ship is working out now so let's press b one more time to get out of here and now welcome we have a flying brick of course you can build them a lot more uh, a lot more beautiful but you know this is a beginner's tutorial and now you see the ship is turning around and all these things but to use the full potential of our ship let's uh, press the middle mouse button again to go towards that equipment dock and let's carefully fly towards there and probably i don't have enough engines but we'll see about that once we have the ship fully stuffed when your ship ain't fully stuffed you are unable to use the uh, the ship uh, fully and i accidentally rammed the station my my relations have worsened so press hire crew and now you see that we need a couple of things there so we need mechanics here go mechanics we're going to hire one of these dudes and you see it's going in here so now we need a gunner we're hiring a gunner and we need miners hiring a miner hiring one more and now you see we'd need an engineer but i don't have any so i have two crew members on board of the ship so you can now either press n and check out other stations in the system press f to interact with them press the hire crew button and you see ah this station has engineers but you can also do something else you can just hire vanilla crew members and assign them to that i'll show you how so ship menu and the second button goes for the crew we have a we have two workforce people left over so you can either press the auto assign button which will make everything go automatically or you could have assigned that workforce by yourself i personally recommend you to just check mark auto assign and do your thing another thing here worth mentioning is that Vanilla people, like the regular ones, they can do the they do every job at 100% efficiency. Specialists do their jobs at 150% efficiency. And as you see here, some jobs have a benefit from being overfulfilled. Some doesn't, as you see here. Uh, some don't. As you see here, the gunners, they don't give me any extra bonus for overfulfilling that because we have 1.5 of 1. But nevertheless, that's all you need to know for now. Here's the crew salary of 1,750 bucks. It'll be paid automatically. Okay, starter ship is ready to shine. Whoops, let's press N one more time to get out of there. And now, you see that flashy thing here? Your ship is very weak compared to other ships in the region. If you press B one more time, this is referring to the firepower here, measured in Omicron. 25.3 Omicron seem to be a very, very low amount of firing power, but I live with that. So what we can do now is if we boost that ship, as you see here, this thing reaches 943 meters per second. That's triple the speed of our little drone. And it's okay to steer and if you're creating your own little ship at home now and you feel like there's a problem there's really one thing that's absolutely brilliant about this game everything here is modular if i notice that something's not working out let's say i'm not happy with my propulsion to be fair let's get over here and slap on some extra engines let's see let's put on two more here boom done let's check it out how does it work now we got 1100 meters per second but you see the battery down there is draining quite fast probably i need more generators so 
you already might get the idea. One last thing before we leave the ship editor for today. I don't want these engine parts here, for example. Let's press the middle mouse button while I'm hovering over it. So you see that white outlining. And let's press the delete button to get rid of it. You also can mark them and press that red X here. That's the other option. Boom. Just like that. And with this ship, we'll be able to mine asteroids now just with the just like we did with the drone the problem there is the two mining turrets we got are pretty crap but that doesn't uh, really stop us from doing our thing so my dear friends now with this all said and done we are now done with one thing but there's one last thing you see i'm now shooting with the laser and the gun i don't want that because it's really bad to shoot with a gun at asteroids because, you know, guns are not good at mining. So one last thing before I leave this episode. So we're going over here to this ship and you can here see all the guns that are attached. So I'm now pressing one, uh, shift one, well, or no, it's control one. Wait a sec. Hello game. Okay, so, yeah. We're assigning, uh, yeah, okay, I'm pressing 1 here and 2 while I'm hovering over this one. Well, this should actually work. It's as if my mouse is a little bit uh, glitchy here right now. But we can now deactivate the... Okay. This shouldn't behave like that. I'm going to check out what's uh, what's happening here because that actually shouldn't be happening. But it's looking like my mouse cursor is trolling me. Okay, I'll check that out once I'm there. The other thing you can do if you don't want to uh, fire your chain gun onto the onto the uh, onto the asteroid is just can't select and remove it but right now my my controls seem to be buggy because you can actually just uh, select a group for these uh, items and uh, and turn them off and on respectively but that uh, doesn't uh, work out right now i'm going to explore that problem and uh check it out at the beginning of the next episode. If that confused you, just don't mix turrets for an hour, just have mining turrets on a mining ship, and you're golden. I'm going to check out what that is, because uh, that's the first time that this problem occurred, and, I thought that, uh, and I've uh, assigned those, those uh, groups several times. Whatever. So that's the end of the first episode, my friends. I hope that was helpful for you. I'm going to carve out a little bit of... Uh, extra resource in between this and the next episode and then we're going to upgrade the performance of this ship because this is a really really bad mining ship as it is right now it's almost as good as the drone only bulkier and uh, harder to steer anywho drop your comments down below leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed and of course i hope you are going to check out the next episode as well feel free to subscribe to my channel there is daily content coming up there just hit uh, have to hit the notification bell to stay informed and last but not least i'd be super happy if you check out those links in the description box below there's my discord there's my twitch and there's also links for direct support of this channel I'd be delighted if you check them out, but don't you worry if you're uh, not going to, because, you know, watching this video until this very point is also meaning a lot to me. See you guys next time, and have a good one. Bye-bye!